Hi, welcome back to the channel. Now don't worry, I'm not going to be recommending you to use an online timescale generator for this. I'm gonna share with you my exact blueprint for the timescale that I use for designs for my business or for real world projects. So if you're interested, let's dive in. Okay, so as you can see over here, I actually am using my very own Figma UI kit and design system called Shipfaster to explain to you the exact timescale that I use for UI design projects. If you are interested, you can download this file, which includes all the foundations for my Figma UI kit with the link in the description. But if you are keen to download the entire package, the premium one, then you can also take a look over here I have all the foundations, but in the premium package, we have literally hundreds, if not thousands of different variations of components that you can access immediately. So we have everything from advanced drop downs, sliders, ratings, video players. We have table components. We also have input fields. We have form controls. We literally have everything that you need to implement into projects right away. We also have different marketing sections as well that you can access and use as a starting point for all your designs. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial with just the free file, which is called Shipfaster UI Base, you can download with the link below. If you want to actually purchase the full package with all the components and also all the web templates as well, it's only 90 bucks. Link is also in the description. So let's go ahead and let me explain to you how to create the perfect real world time scale for your UI design projects. Now, as you can see in my Figma UI kit and design system, we have four different categorizations. So we have headings, we have mobile headings, we have paragraphs, and then we also have labels. I'm also going to show you a real world project of how all these are applied to a project as well, just so you understand exactly how it all works. I want to explain to you labels first, and then we'll work on paragraphs, and then I'll explain to you how I set them up for headings. So a lot of times when designers are working on projects, they generally will set up a type style for paragraphs. And we tend to use paragraphs for all sorts of text. Anything that's text, we generally have paragraph styles. But the issue is that if I go over to a real world project that I just wrapped up, you can see here we have a dashboard of videos that have been uploaded for this company called Screen App, which is sort of your own dashboard. And then we also have another screen. Once you click onto a video, we have a bit of a transcription of the video and the user can ask questions into the AI and it will pull insights out. As you can see over here, the summary, which generally has a bunch of paragraphs of text, this is meant to be a paragraph style because a paragraph is really just a combination of multiple sentences put together. So if you don't have a large enough line height, then your text becomes very tight. So for example, let me just change this over to the label style. You can see that it actually becomes very tight and it doesn't look that good. So you want to expand that a little bit. So that's why I have different styles for paragraph text. And I also have different styles for labels, because as you can see over here, this is a label where it talks about or showcases who was the user that uploaded this video. And this is also a label to showcase how long the video is. This is also a label to showcase how many people were in this video as well. So as you can see, if I directly select this text, we are actually using labels. So really to summarize the difference between a label and a paragraph is that a label is just a couple of words or even just one word. And it generally doesn't need a large line height because we don't have multiple layers of labels on top of each other. However, with a paragraph, because there's going to be multiple lines of text, we need larger line height. So that is the key reason why I have a different set of type styles for labels. So if we pop back into Shipfaster UI, you can see that really the secret to my scale for real world UI design projects is just incrementing them by two pixels. Label for extra small is 10 pixels. Label for a small is 12, 14, and 16. And you can see that the line heights increment by two as well, or sometimes it's two to four, depending on what is going to work perfectly. This is the approach that I've used for 
all my projects. And as you can see with these designs, the type works perfectly fine. It looks great. The spacing is correct. Even on this design where we have paragraphs, you can see that the line height is a little bit different. If I was to show you the actual tablet design, you can see that the types perfect. The type over here is also perfect. And if we go to mobile, you can see that it all looks perfectly balanced as well. And that is the benefit of using Ship Faster UI or having this incremental approach where it's just two pixels. It allows your topography to be very consistent. So that is for labels. If you take a look at the paragraphs, once again, it's just going to be incrementing by two. So for paragraph extra small, font size is 12 pixels, small is 14, 16, and then 18 for large. And you can see that the line height, sometimes it's going to be the same. If I notice that the actual type itself, the font itself has been configured in a way where the, where the spacing is already like pretty nice. We don't need to increment it, but generally it will sit between a two to four pixel increment for the line height. Now, if you take a look at the headings, it's following a very similar approach as well. So with the heading six, 18 pixels, 20 pixels, 24, 28, 32 and 36. Then you also have the line height, which generally increments by four or two pixels, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, and 44. Now you can see that with the headings, same approach. We have 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, and 52. And the line height is pretty much the same as well. So really, because you will have access to this file, once again, feel free to download the free version, the link below. But if you are interested in the full package, you can download and buy ShipFaster UI, which we constantly update and you get access to all the components. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and show you the designs that I did for a real world project in a little bit more detail so you can see the topography scales applied in real world project. So over here, you can see that for this project that I worked on, which was Screen App, you can see that the topography is pretty well balanced and there was no magic pill that I took. It really is using 16 pixels as a base and anything from there, I would either increase it by two pixels or decrease it by two or four pixels. So as you can see, most of the labels, which are generally should be labels. So one words are generally labels, not paragraphs. You should only be using paragraph styles for large chunks of text. It's generally going to be a medium because I personally like using 16 pixels as a base font because I generally like to use 16 pixels as a baseline for my projects because I think 16 pixels is quite easy to read. You can see that we have a large label, which is semi-bold, but then the metadata for this card, which I wanted to create more visual hierarchy, we are using the label small medium. So generally, as you can see, small is going to be 12 pixels and anything else will be around 16 to 14 pixels. Now let's take a look at this screen over here. We've got a modal for actually sharing or inviting people to this collaboration folder. Once again, we have a heading, which is H4. And then we have paragraph, which is medium, that's 16 pixels. Then we have a, a label that's 16 pixels because it's medium. And then everything else is also medium as well. You don't really need crazy type scales for your projects. With this, as you can see, if you just have consistent and a well set up type style, you can actually design very beautiful UI with this approach. So let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, this screen over here as well. Once again, 16 pixels, line, a label medium. Everything is generally going to be a heading or a label because there is no large chunks of text over here. So all labels and they're large label or small because they're metadata and we want to create that visual hierarchy. Once again, over here, most of these are going to be labels except this text over here because a summary of this video that we're going to showcase to the user could have lots of text like that and we want to make sure it's easy to read. But even though there are not a few words on this tab over here, if we select that, it's actually just a label because we don't expect to have questions that are going to be on multiple lines. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to set up a practical and real world type style for your project. And once again, if you want to download this free foundational uh, UI kit and design system, feel free to check the link in the description. If you want to purchase the entire package, access all the components that we update quite often, then definitely check out the full package 
called Shipfaster UI and version 2.7 will be launching fairly soon. And once again, if you enjoy this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans, and if you want to learn more, you should definitely check out this video.